Right, so now theory, let's actually get to the fun part. So what I want to do for this project is I want to create a small React library and it's going to be a wrapper around CSS spinners. Now, if you do a quick search for CSS spinners, you're going to find out that there's actually quite a few of them online. But the website that I decided to use is loading.io. And this one basically allows you to copy paste the CSS code in order to create a custom spinner. So for example, if I wanted to make a circle spinner, I could basically pick the source code, copy it into a CSS file, and then copy the underlying HTML markup as well. So this is something that can be easily encapsulated using React components. And this is exactly what we're gonna be doing. Now, if you don't already have an account on GitHub, make sure that you create one. And then once you do, we're gonna create a new repository. So I'm going to call this one React CSS Spinners. Now we could call it React Spinners, but if we actually go to npm repository, so I'm gonna do npm.im slash React Spinners, you're going to find out that this package already exists. And in fact, it has quite a few downloads. But if we look for something like React CSS Spinners, this one doesn't exist yet. So this could be something that we can actually use as the name for our project. So we're going to call it React CSS Spinners. Now for the description, we're going to say CSS only spinners for React. We are then going to also include a readme in the repo. And we're going to also add a license. I'm going to pick an MIT license and let's create a repo. So now as you can see this added the license file and also the readme.md file as well. So what I'll do next is I'll click on this clone or download button and I'm going to copy the link. So let's go back to our terminal. I'll go to my directory in workspace code realm. So next up I'm going to do a git clone of that repo. So let's go to React CSS Spinners. As you can see, we got the two files. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do npm init-y to initialize an npm repo. So let's open it in the VS Code. Now, if you look at package.json, you're gonna find out that some of the fields are already populated. So things like repository or bugs or even the homepage. So that's pretty good. I'm only going to update the license to MIT. Now the author, I'm gonna put myself, Alex. For the keywords, I'm gonna put React. CSS spinners like this. So now we're going to go back to the terminal. I'm going to do a git status so we can go ahead and add the package JSON file. I'll do a commit initialize npm package. So I'll do a git push and this should be reflected on GitHub as well. So now if we go back to our presentation, we talked about several stages in our build process. So the first stage, of course, would be the install stage. And this one we can actually skip because it's going to be done by the CI environment. The next stage will be the lint stage. And this one we can actually focus on. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a file, which is called editor config. So if we go ahead and look for editor config, now this one can help us define the coding style for editors and IDEs. So what we can do is we can go back to our project. Let's go ahead and create that file editor config. Now I'm actually going to go back in here. Let's actually copy some of the code in here. So we're going to set root to true at the top of the file. And now for every single file in the project, what we're going to do is we're going to set the end of line to line feed using the Unix style syntax. We're also going to insert the final new line as well. So let's put in that one. We're also going to put a character set to UTF-8 as well. Now besides that, we can also set the indentation and the size for indentation as well. So let's go ahead and put those two. So we're going to put in the two spaces for indentation. And finally, I'm going to put trim trailing white space set to true. And this one, as the name suggests, is going to trim any white space between the identifiers in the code. Now, this will only affect the editors, but we also want to set up some kind of a formal linting tool. Now, in the past, you guys probably seen me using something known as standard JS. So this is a coding style, which also has a CLI to lint your code and also fix some of the issues that the code might have. So I'm going to use the standard style, but I'm actually not going to use standard directly. What I'm going to use instead is going to be ESLint. Now, if we go ahead and look for ESLint, the setup is fairly simple. So all we have to do is we basically need to install it as a dev dependency. So let's do exactly that back in the terminal. Let me clear it out. I'm going to do npm install a dev dependency of ESLint. And now in fact, before we do that, let's do a quick git status. I'm going to do an add command on editor config. So I'm going to do a commit add editor config file. So now that we've done that, 
let's do a git status again. So we have our package JSON modified. So the ESLint was installed. So now if we do npx ESLint, we're going to see a bunch of options that we can specify. So for one thing, we could scan all of the files in a given directory. So what we can do is we can do make directory source. So inside of the source directory, we're going to touch a file source index.js. Now back in the repo, I'm going to also add a git ignore file as well. So let's do git ignore. As you can see, I already got a message in my VS code. So what we have to do is we need to add node modules to git ignore. So this way it's going to ignore any files in that node modules folder. Once that's done, we're going to go to our index.js file. So now as a demo, let's do a simple console log. We're going to screw up the styling. So I'm going to put in some extra spaces. Let's put in the brackets and separate lines. Let's do hello plus I'm going to add some extra spaces intentionally. Let's also mix up the quotes, my friend something like that. And I'm going to also put a semicolon at the end. So now before we can run ESLint, we're going to have to go back to the documentation. So in order to set it up, we need to run ESLint dash dash init. So let's do exactly that. I'm going to do npx ESLint dash dash init. So now in this case, we can pick up a popular style. Like I said, I am a big fan of standard. So this is the one I'm going to be using in this project. So let's pick up standard. We're going to pick up a JSON file format for our config file. Now, do we want to install the dependencies? Yes, please. So let's confirm that. All right, so once that's done, you're gonna see that we get an ESLint rc.json file, and this one is gonna extend standard for us. So we don't have to write any configuration explicitly. In fact, this is gonna use the recommended config for standard JS. Now, if we go back to the terminal, I'm gonna try npx ESLint on the source directory. So we're gonna target the index.js file. So if I run that, you're going to see that we find six different problems. So you're going to see that we have a mixed up indentation. We are using double quotes, but we're expecting to use single quotes with standard. And we also have an extra semicolon at the end. So now as the message suggests, we can actually fix some of those issues. So if I try to do ESLint, let's do npx ESLint on the source directory .js file with the dash dash fix option. So that's going to try to fix the file. Now if we do npx ESLint again, we don't have any issues anymore. So now if we go back to the file, you're going to see that everything is more or less consistent with the standard style, but it still looks pretty ugly because the code is not formatted. And this is where Prettier shines. So linter is only one tool that we want to enable. In order to actually format our code and make it readable, we need to use a different tool, which is known as a formatter. So now for that, we can use a tool known as Prettier. So there's actually a package known as Prettier ESLint. So now to get started, we can actually install it as a dev dependency. So if I go back to the terminal, let's do npm install dash d Prettier ESLint. And if you want to use it as a CLI, we also want to install another dependency known as Prettier ESLint CLI. So let's also install that one as well. As you can see, it's a CLI for Prettier ESLint. So to use it, we can call Prettier ESLint and we can also pass the files that we want to look at. So now if I go back to the terminal, we could try npx prettier eslint. And let's also look for source. We're going to go into any nested directory and we're going to look for all JavaScript files. And it's also recommended to put quotes around it just to avoid some of the issues that might come up eventually. So let's try running it. And we get the output, which is a beautifully formatted console log statement. And on this one, we get to the standard output, so to the terminal, but this doesn't actually write to the file. In order to write to the file, we need to pass in a special write option. So if we look for it, it has a write option that we can pass. And this one will actually modify the file itself. So back in the terminal, I'm going to do the same command with the dash dash write. And of course, this will actually write to the file and modify it. As you can see, we get a console log statement. So now if we go back to our package JSON, I'm going to add a few scripts. So in the scripts section, I'm going to add a script to lint our code. So I'm going to put eslint. And instead of only doing it for the source directory, I'm going to do it for the root of the project. So let's do any directory that contains any JavaScript files. And once again, we're going to wrap it with single quotes as well. And for the second command, we're going to run eslint colon fix. So this will do prettier dash eslint, and this will apply the same regex pattern, but it's also going to pass in the right option to fix the code and also write the changes to the files. So if I go back to index.js, let's put in some gibberish. I'm going to save the file. And now if I do npm run lint, you're going to see that it finds a bunch of problems, but if we do npm run lint colon fix, this will fix all of the issues in the file. 
and format it successfully. So now it, it might also be worthwhile to apply the changes as we save the file. So for that, we can actually create a configuration for VS Code. So I'll create a .VS Code directory, and we can create a special settings.json file. And so this is where we can put some of the custom settings that we want to apply to the files in the project. So for example, we can pass in editor.format on save. We're going to set it to true. And now this will format the files once we save them. And now the next one is actually for the ESLint plugin. So the first thing you would want to do is you want to make sure that you already have ESLint and Prettier installed. So if you don't, make sure to install them first. So now if we go back to the browser, we're going to go to Prettier ESLint. And now one thing we can do is we can enable VS Code integration. So what we have to do is we have to set this property, prettier.eslint integration. So if we copy it, I'm going to put it in here to our settings file. We're going to wrap it with quotes and we'll set it to true. So now I'm going to restart VS Code. So if I go back to index.js, now if I save the file, you're going to see that it auto formats the source code for us. So this way we don't necessarily have to run eslint call and fix all the time manually. We can actually set it up ourselves in the editor. So every time you make a change to a file, every time you save that change, the code will be auto formatted using the eslint rc configuration that we have in the project. So now if we go back to the terminal, I'm going to do a git status. There's quite a few files that we can commit, so let's just add all of them. So we'll do git add period to add everything, including package lock JSON file. You want to make sure to also commit that one. So let's do git commit, and the message will be add eslint and prettier. So we can go ahead and push it to GitHub. 